Hello, welcome for another Café Rollist. I am joined today with so, two fine folks based in Italy. Uh, nothing pleases us more than showcasing people from uh, around Europe. Could you introduce yourselves? Hi, um, I am Lorenzo Silva. Uh, I am, we work, uh, I am a game designer of uh, some games like Sims Dilemma, Ocean Explosion, Roller Roller Wings. He's the designer of photosynthesis, an addition of, and not of uh, uh, ocean. <laughs> yes, so we're working together. Uh, do you still hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Fine, no problem. It froze. Uh, oh, uh, it's okay. <laughs> oh. Okay. If, if you can see and, and hear us, it's okay. Yeah. And we are working together. Awesome. Uh, so, what is No More Quest about? Uh, is it a board game? Is it a story game? Is it a role playing game? Uh, it's a role playing game, and it, it is a dexterity role playing game. So, it's it's uh, like a traditional role playing game, like Dungeons and Dragons, uh, but it's set in in a weird and and, and funny world uh, called Middleware. Uh, that it's the same setting of Dungeon Fighter. That is one of um, yeah. of my game <laughs> that that we published with Horrible Deal. Uh, so it uses the same core mechanics that it uses um, a target at the center of the table. I take one, and the uh, players have to take dice and throw the dice on the table and then the die has to land on the target and and the band of the target you hit it's the the, the damage or, or the result of the um, of your of your test or the result of your die roll yeah yeah so you pretty much said anything everything <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay we're done all good <laughs> That's going to be a tough yeah. interview for me if you already said everything about the game. No, 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 we have many things to say. Is... Yeah, I'm, I was joking. So, yeah, so what, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no, what this uh, creates is a strange simulation of what you're doing. So uh, instead of just rolling a die to see how your character does based on his stats, it is actually you who, it's your stats as, as, as a human being who are tested and and you're doing this these actions where i don't know you want to um disarm a trap and you're launching the the die with the with the pinky fingers like trying uh, to hit the target but it's kind of putting you in in the simulation it's it's kind of the we the nintendo we of role-playing <laughs> games <laughs> So yeah, it reminds me a bit of uh, like if someone was making a role-playing game, but instead of using dice or even play cards or even a Jenga tower for for Dread, you could use a, a set of Molky and throw your things uh, at it. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So tell me, um... I've I've interviewed quite a few tabletop role-playing games publishers who were developing a board game, uh, a, sorry, yeah, a board game, because they were, according to them, that's where the money was, rather than in tabletop role-playing games. So what inspired you to do the opposite move and go into the uh, unprofitable field of role-playing games? That's an interesting <laughs> question. Yes, because uh, no sense, to be honest. It's just <laughs> now that you tell us, uh, probably we're yeah, not we will, doing this we game will anymore. Yeah, we cancel the project. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> it's not. I got nothing to do with that. <laughs> Role playing games are not profitable. Uh... <laughs> well, the, their their argument was that. Um, oh, no. 
It's a lot I of work understand. to do a board games. I, I don't know. Because... Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no, the, 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 um, I know. I know that it's a strange decision, but it mainly it mainly comes because when we work on on a board game, we always work a lot on on the setting, on the on the background, and we had some experience with more narrative stuff like uh, King's, Dilemma. King's Dilemma, and we really enjoyed to to develop the the narrative behind. Uh, the game, so uh, we had this. Um, we, we had the line of Dungeon Fighter that it's huge. We have something like 200 artworks and a lot of mechanics and a lot of stuff that we uh, that we created and and a lot of background. So uh, when when you see all those crazy creators in Dungeon Fighter, we we know uh, the story behind that. So we decided to. Um, start uh, a project that will be for sure less profitable than any board game we will do, but um, we always love to explore, explore, yeah, make new things. Uh, so we we do as a publisher, we always try to follow what we uh, want to to develop and to do in that moment. So we do party game, we do uh, roll and write, narrative games, card games, uh, miniatures games. We did almost everything. So uh, just role playing games are missing. Like, like, you know, when you leave the kids alone without parents, that's kind of what <laughs> So you are preparing, because I don't think it has started yet, a Kickstarter campaign for one more quest. Uh, what's the sort of schedule program ahead of you uh, to, to get there, to get this campaign started? I think that at, at our plan is to launch it in November, um, less or more. So if you, if, you, if you like this project, we suggest to subscribe to our newsletter or Facebook or any of our socials so you can be updated. Um, but we will launch a um, quick start guide with, um, with a short adventure and the short versions of the rule. Uh, we are working on that right now and we will release it online for free, obviously, in I think a couple of two, three weeks, yeah. um, something like in the end of July, let's say this. So that people can try. Yeah. They can try out the game and yeah, give us feedback. Oh, like goblins. I love the look of that goblin. Like this. There's a goblin king on the other side. Or the goblin king. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> really scary. Yeah, so we are also curious to see what, what people will say and how they will react to the game. The game is pretty uh, standard, I would say in a sense of we started from Dungeons and Dragons. We didn't want to make something that was so um, like an indie game, okay? We, we wanted to make something that was more uh, in touch with the, I mean, with the broader audience of Dungeons and Dragons uh, players, uh, but still have that original thing of throwing the big so twist, the big twist of dexterity and uh, like, yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. I can say uh, when we tried the adventure, you, you, after the adventure, when you missed your magic missile five times because you cannot throw uh, from behind the back while turning, you go home <laughs> and you can train on the skill so that next time your character <laughs> will be more accurate. Um, so it, yeah, it's it's like Dark Soul. It's yeah. it's not your character that level up, but it's you that level up in this game. Yeah, and on the other hand, it's uh, it's it's full comedy. The game is the 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 system, the base system of testing you, uh, your skills, etc., puts you in the mood, uh, and also all the uh, background puts you in the mood of of like comedy. So. Uh, it's not it's not so bad when you miss. It's not so bad when things go wrong, which is a thing that happens since yeah yeah all the time obviously. That's yeah, the because, expectation. Uh, I don't know if we uh, yeah because I we, we didn't tell told this um, clearly, but in every situation the uh, 
um, the SDM Supreme Dungeon Mastermind, uh, that it's the Dungeon Master, dungeon master <laughs> of One More Quest. The Supreme Dungeon Mastermind can uh, always ask to the player to perform the the throw to hit the target in a specific with a specific restriction, and it could be with eyes closed if you are if you're fighting in the darkness yeah. or with your with your left hand or I don't know maybe you're trying to perform and convince an audience uh, so maybe you have to to, turn to, to spin yourself. to yeah. twist on yourself bef before you you throw the die and or maybe you are trying to hide so you will have to to throw um, sitting on the floor staying behind the table uh, so many of these special restrictions uh, simulate some of the situation your character is really in. Yeah, and sometimes they stack. So maybe oh, wow. you're trying, I was saying, you're trying to disarm the trap with the pinky finger shot, but it's dark, so you have to do the pinky finger shot while blindfolded, like closing the eyes. And, and I, I mean, it's so, yeah, I don't know, it creates these funny moments and... Uh, and and the cool thing is that if, if the SDM has to make a test, you will have the same restriction as the players. So if, <laughs> if, if the, if the it's, 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 super, it's super fun because uh, you, you have this, I don't know, you're fighting uh, a, a big an, an ancient dragon that is super strong, but maybe the SDM will never hit the target with a with hundred dice. So it's not a big problem for the party. And on the other side, maybe just a small goblin could hit the, the bullseye and kick, kick at the ass of all the party with, with a couple of shots. So this mechanic is yeah, common so is... with Dungeon Fighter, uh, the, the board games. How do the, the two games di differ? differ uh, one more quest and Dungeon Fighter. Yeah, so they differ, obviously, because one is a board game and the other one is a role-playing game. So what we did is to take the spirit uh, and the throw restrictions from Dungeon Fighter, like the mood you're in, but we made it a lot broader, like uh, we, we, we can uh, mm, create adventures about investigation with this. We can create adventures about, uh, yeah, like slaughtering monsters and, uh, but we have a very broad range with the new, with the, with the system. And yeah, you have the, the yeah, this is an example yeah, of the, yeah, that's that's yeah, that's made by us, not by a graphic designer. Yeah, it's still the prototype. Here. <laughs> still the prototype, but we have. I'm at the prototype stage also. So. <laughs> okay. <yeah. laughs> yeah. So so it's it borrows like the feeling, but we made it a lot broader, and we created systems for all the situations. Trying to remain simple because we don't want it to have like a very simulative, complex game, but we wanted it to be flexible as Dungeons and Dragons is. And yeah. role-playing game often they come with lore, adventure, setting, all this sort of stuff. So you you saying your setting is very uh, comedy focused, but uh, how much of that can people expect in terms of of content uh, in the, the original book is it, is it going to be mainly the rules and people can go on and develop their own world or do do you have a setting which you draw from dungeon fighter which is somewhat ex exhaustive we 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 will have um, a big part of the manual dedicated to the setting we will have an explanation of all the world of middleware uh, with there are many kingdoms, many different cultures. places, cultures, yeah. and there will be, um, some of them will have uh, a long explanation of what you can find, and other will be shorter, maybe uh, maybe for future manuals, or, yeah, but no. we, we will give an idea of everything. We will have also, I think, around 30, 40, 50 monsters, um with their story behaviors and 
everything you can expect from uh, two, three hundred pages manual. Yeah. So the lore will be exhaustive, I yeah. think. Uh, and we are fleshing out the world uh, really in the detail. Obviously, not all the detail will be available. Um, but yeah, you can expect um, a pretty thorough work on the background. Uh, we've yeah, got and because because it's a Kickstarter. Go ahead. Because go ahead. It, it, this will be a Kickstarter, so maybe there there will be room to expand to expand to upgrade depending on how the thing go. So, picturing a Kickstarter, often you you've got nice neat add-ons to have. Uh, uh, I I expect you could have a nice box set with a a, a target a cardboard target or maybe fabric target and these sort of things. Uh, do you have uh, already uh, an idea what the the basic set will be like and what the expansion, uh, the add-ons could be like? Well, we will we will talk about it uh, when it, when when we will um, showcase the, the campaign. Uh, we have already some ideas, but it's not uh, so well defined. We are still uh, in. Uh, uh yeah uh research phase <laughs> yeah at, at the moment we're trying to understand if uh if it will be boxed to put the target and and the dice because the game use uh d6 with uh, uh five blank faces and just one symbol on one face that i show you So this is what you need to play. So only one phase have to be special. You can obviously use the six yeah. and say that this is that the six, six. is uh, that or just the one is that. Yeah. Um, but we are trying to evaluate to evaluate if uh, but if, if in, in the in the core game you will have the, the target board and the and the special dice, um, maybe the map something like this or if the basic game will be only the, the manual and you can purchase uh, the target and the dice and the dice um, apart. This all depends on the final price that we can um, achieve depending on the quotation that we're asking. Already yeah, already we're, asking yeah, we're asking in these days. Uh, we got in the chat room uh, uh, King of Demons, hello, and also D20 Future Show Richard. Uh, who's got a, an actual player podcast and streams. Uh, and I was wondering, how do you picture... I think it would be quite interesting to see your game played on Twitch, but then I'm not sure what the video webcam setup <laughs> would be like for people to throw uh, their things. I, I mean, playing online ob for obvious reasons would be quite a challenge, unless you have some plans over there. Yeah, I don't know. I played mm, some adventures online. Uh... I was smart working from the lake, and so I had to play from there. And actually, I had my my camera uh, like watching the target and myself behind the target. And every time I had to throw, I throw, I throw, I threw from yeah from there. And you could see what I did, and it actually went on pretty well. It was um, not so limited. But I don't know for the streaming. Probably you will need a, a camera, for a, a top view, I don't know, uh, if you want to make a show about it. I think the, the, the result could be quite exciting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's a thing. So one thing is, if the die throw is uh, an important moment, the resolution is an important moment in, in some role-playing games. In this one, it really there is really like a show going on. Like when you, uh, we, we did, a, we did a, an adventure where at one point we were all trying to dance to impress some monsters. <laughs> and I, I, was, I was the SDM and, <laughs> I, and cannot, I, I cannot describe that, that moment. Like I, I, I wanted, I had a character who wanted to be cool. And so I was trying uh, in, in every way to be cool, but I was everything but cool. Uh, and so it, he was continuously asking me to do harder and harder tests to maintain the atmosphere of dancing. But I, I don't know. I was on a on a on a streak of incredible success. And and every time you you throw and you get that big center, you get that unexpected result. It, it's really like uh, or you need to kill a monster and you 
it's going, it's killing you, and you have your last shot. You know you're going to have to shot it. It creates all that atmosphere around it. That uh, yeah, it's really unique and a funny um, thing about the game that I really like. Should yeah. have should have asked you two to make a demonstration. I think that would be uh, <laughs> that would be quite interesting uh, as well. Uh, so, does the system with the target include things like uh, you know succeeding at a cost or uh, you know the degrees of success depending on okay. where you land? Or how does that work? Yeah, I I explain you very quickly the um, the core mechanic. So. Um, every character has six um, characteristics that can go from one to five. And when you, um, we have to, to kind of test, in, in the basic test there is um, difficulty that goes from one to ten. And so from super easy to super hard. So um, I don't know, you want to convince someone, you try to intimidate uh, a guard to, I don't know, to open uh, the gate. Um, so you, uh, the, the, the SDM decided the, the sorry, sorry, Almar, uh, the difficulty of the test, maybe it's four, uh, and it's a test of intimidation. And every, every skill uh, has a suggested special restriction and for example, in the case of intimidation, you have to do a punch shot that is something like this. So you have to hit the, the, hit the table with your punch to intimidate the, <laughs> the, the, the other character. And uh, yeah, one thing you have to say is the, the die, the rule for throwing is really easy. The die has to touch once the table before it gets on the target yeah so whatever okay. you do it just has to touch the table to get on the target so you cannot do this okay and so so you you try to do your 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 throw and maybe you hit and you hit the two so you the, the difficulty was four you did two so in theory is a is a fail but Every time you do a test, you have a number of pushes ah, that okay. are limited, and you spend them so you can do another. Uh, you can More. throw another die and add the result. Yes. So if if with the second die you hit two or more, it will be a success. But in this case, you spend one of your daily pushes. Maybe you have four, five, six per day, depending on the character. Yeah. And if the die hit the target and you have a special icon, you double the, um, the, value. the value of the, um, of the target. So you always have uh, one, one chance over six to, to double the result. But if you miss, so and if it goes out of the so, target. Yeah, if you don't hit the target, it goes out and you have a special icon, it's um critical failure. Critical failure <laughs> with the yeah. horrible consequences that you can imagine. Uh, I was yeah, and in combat in combat. Uh, sorry, yeah, and, yeah. and you and you and you add your your stats Obviously. bonus yeah. to the to the result. It's yeah, it's like the it's like D D, you have your die, you you throw it, you get a number and you add your your skill level to that number. But here the number you get it from the target. And you can throw a second die to push that value over oh. and up. And during combat the the number you you do <coughs> is the damage you deal. So uh, you don't have a uh, a throw to, to hit, hitting the target is already hitting the enemy, and then you get that, that, the, that the number you do, plus obviously the bonuses you get, uh, is the, the damage you deal. And you have uh, armor that subtracts from it. It's uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, yeah. I'm picturing now a, a a corner of Spiel or UK Games Expo, you know, big com gaming convention, and just dice flying all over the place into the alleys <laughs> next to, yeah, to, to your demonstrations. Uh, 
Sadly, things are still a, a, a bit difficult, but we do have UK Games Expo, which is coming. I don't know what's happening with Spiel. Do you have plans uh, uh, to go and make demonstrations at some upcoming conventions? We just decided to book um, Stand? Yeah, a, a booth in, in Essen, Essen Spiel. So we will be there with, I think we will have just a few demo table because of the uh, COVID problem and restrictions. So, uh, but we will have for sure um, a table of one more quest. That's great. Uh, I was wondering also, since your game is in, inspired by a board game and there's a, a very, uh, I mean, any European game's got a playful aspect to it, but you, you're sort of cranking that to 11. Uh, is your hope sort of to, to hit both the tabletop role-playing market and board gaming market? Is it to have board gamers have a go at tabletop role-playing or the other way around? Or, or do you sort of see that? I think this is just a role-playing game, actually. Yeah, if, if we will be able to bo to to hit both of the, the targets, will be great. But well, there is a lot of overlapping between uh, role-playing gamers and, and tabletop, games, yeah. uh, tabletop gamers. But uh, our, our focus on the marketing, on the communication here will be on role-playing gamers. And that it's completely new for us. So if everyone has some suggestion. Yeah, if you can help us <laughs> to understand. Like what, what I understood is there is no money here, right? So that's a good first thing to know. It's about. very welcoming. There is no money. And if you get contacted by anyone with TSR in the handle, you need to check if there's an underscore or not, because that might not seem like much. But right now it's very important. You need to check your underscores. But <laughs> yeah, I, I will. I will. Yeah, we're, we're trying to to be as supportive uh, as possible. Uh, I, I'll t let you know uh, of a couple of people who probably uh, you could interview you with. Uh, so many of them with more listeners than I have. Uh, going back, you know, uh, in what a lot of role players are into. So the the universe of one more quest is middleware. So what what is middleware like? Or is that different from the Forgotten Realms? Or what what is going on? Who's the Elminster of Middleware or the the Strad of Middleware? Do you have vampires and, and so on? Gelatinous cubes? What what is going on in this place? Uh, in middleware you can find almost everything you can imagine to find in, in, a, in a classic fantasy world. But at some point, you will find out that, that there is a strange twist. For example, uh, those, those orc tribes are, are not so violent or, or aggressive. They just have a problem and they cannot spell words. So they just, blah, blah, blah. they speak like this so everybody is scared but they are <laughs> they are really they are really nice for example they're, they're actually literates they're, and yeah. they have a, 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 a very complex political system where yeah they are actually the most advanced from a, a intellectual point of view yeah <laughs> they're just missing the high high notes from the vocal cords so yeah <laughs> and this small problem created the legend of the of the evil and violent orcs this is one example, but um, there are many. There is a kingdom of frog. Uh, of you, you can also play frog, uh, frog folks people um, that can be playable characters. There are. Um, I don't know. One thing that's made me really laugh because uh, it's so. Uh, the the elves are like. Um, like living this bohemian lifestyle, like uh, this, uh, they like they drink, they they use drugs, they are like, uh, and that's and why because they have to go through their such a long lifespan, right? Because normally other races have uh, uh, an average uh, 
lifespan. age lifespan of 60 years they have 75 like it's, it's like for those 15 years you're doing our whole day. <laughs> So it's really, it's joking around with all the stereotypes of, of, uh, yeah, of the classical, uh, but yeah, in, in a, in a cute and, and funny way. Yeah. Amazing. Uh, we've got King of Demons. And, and, oh, yeah, yeah one, go ahead. Go ahead. One big concept is, uh, you're dungeon fighters, right? So you go into the dungeons and, and you expect like there is a, uh, uh, an overlord that is uh, managing the dungeon you have the monsters and you go in and you expect to kill everyone get the treasure and go out right that's the kind of narrative you have but actually in dungeon fighters the dungeons are the dungeons are like um the, the villages of the evil evil the, lords it, it's or... it's his uh it's his uh, i mean they have a reception uh maybe you have uh goblins uh, cleaning uh yeah. cleaning the floor and you have a, a minotaur that we have we called manotaur uh in the kitchens uh cooking, cooking. for everyone so yeah, yeah it's like no. <laughs> so not 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 everybody th there is always a twist also in the adventure we are writing there is all, always a twist and not every situation um is to be resolved with violence. Well, you can if you want. It's but um, there are many things. Well, the, the monster, like the dungeon fighters, the monster in the into the, in the dungeon are just there because it's their job. So they have been called from an evil overlord. They to work for them. Yeah, to work for them. So maybe they can be convinced to do to help or just to let you pass or or maybe you just can take your sword and cut their heads off it's it's your decision there's there's more and more uh well i think welcome talks about accessibility in role-playing game and representation and i was wondering with the dexterity based system uh, have you considered uh i mean i don't know a paragraph or something uh, highlighting how the game can be accessible for people who um, uh, don't have maybe the motor coordination of. Uh, I'm not. I'm not sure if it's appropriate to say that, but an average yeah, yeah, person, yeah. let's say. Yeah, we are. Um, we were discussing about this paragraph a few days ago. Yeah, obviously there is. Um, the, the the point is uh, that in in every situation the you don't have a fixed restriction. Uh, so the, the dungeon master, the SDM can, can change the restriction depending on the people uh, at the table. And obviously we have something like 35, 40 different restrictions and it's always possible to change one for another, even if someone put the players in, in embarrass uh, yeah. Well, the, the important thing is always to have a fair um, and uh, and funny and, and, yeah, and funny environment at the table. So uh, it's it's very open. So you can, um, you can you can you don't have strict rules. You can change the rules. You can change the throws. And if you don't like to to throw the dice on on the target, if you can also play the game. Uh, rolling, yeah, rolling random numbers and on on a d10 and yeah. and that's kind of yeah you can always resort to that if the if the if the, if the, the there is uh, there are problems that that yeah where you cannot play uh, the game as it is you always can roll a random number and yeah so yeah, this question was inspired by King of Demons, who was asking in the chat room. I, I don't know if they they had something specific in mind regarding that, but uh, they were asking if there they could be an audio version of the rules. I don't know if that's something which is becoming uh, common. Sorry, an audio version of the what? rules. Uh, audio, audio yeah. version of the rules. No, we we didn't, we, we didn't thought about this. That could be a. Uh... 
like you you mean just an, a video explanation something like this audio to, explanation or, yeah or to be, audio? To be yeah, honest okay, i don't know because it's a question from the chat room and i, I ask some clarification but it's it's not it's yeah, not no, crystal like the... clear to me what what king of demons meant it's... so uh that's my interpretation but i'm, I'm not sure yeah, it... If okay. you cannot, if you cannot read, probably an audio explanation is what you would use to, yeah, to understand how the game works. Um, I think it's possible. Yeah, we could do that. Great. Is there anything else you want to to mention about? I'm running out of questions, and uh, there's not that many coming from the the chat room. So yeah, what what did we not cover? Okay, but one you... more quest. I can show you the first draft of the cover. Here you can see a frogman 